Learning backend for the first time was kind of a bit. Hold on, let me explain. Hi, my name is Evan and I am a 16 year old innovator at the Knowledge Society. So I began my journey in AI by making some pretty simple machine learning models like with scikit-learn and I made, I replicated uh, the MNIST digit classification, um, some K-neighbor stuff. Honestly, nothing was really special. So I realized as I kept doing these projects that I'm not really gaining anything and people can't interact with this project. So I thought, okay, how can I make this project more interactive for these people to look at my projects and actually use them? And so I came across web apps and I was like, you know what? This is pretty interesting. I want to get into this. I realized that you could find endless repositories on GitHub of code that just looked exactly like mine. And honestly, it was nothing special. You, you could find it everywhere and nobody would give a darn if they just saw your code. It was honestly nothing special. You see, in the real world, your results, they have to be presentable. So I started my journey in making web apps. One day when I just woke up and felt like, you know what, I'm gonna start making web apps now. And so, of course, I did, you know, the usual Google searching, the Stack Overflow, and I learned libraries and frameworks such as Flask for the backend, and I refined a little bit of my Python, and I also had to relearn HTML and CSS because I was a little bit shabby at that. But beyond that, I was still clueless, and a lot of the things I was doing, it took a long time for me to get over that learning curve. Anyways, I actually ended up making that web app. In, in two weeks, I created a iris flower classifier. And given a set of inputs, it would detect the type of iris flower based on its uh, petal width or some, some stuff like that. But that's not important. What's important is that this project, well, I didn't really feel satisfied. And honestly, it was a pretty simple project. And I never got to deploy it. I knew how to build a simple web app, but honestly, I just wasn't satisfied with it and it just didn't look good either. So one of my friends, Aleem, he was like, yo, Evan, why don't you just try building this in React? I'm expecting some high standards, like just regular HTML and CSS, Psh, nah. And so I started remaking the web app in React, but this time it was actually a completely different project. And so the relearning process began, and I had to learn a lot of new things. More specifically, I had to relearn JavaScript, which I was pretty shabby in the past with. And on top of that, I had to learn React. So learning JavaScript took about two, three days, and picking up React took about, you know, a day or so. And honestly, I was not good at it at all, but it was worth it. I'd say the hardest thing during my time learning React was when I was trying to figure out how to use this client called Axios. And honestly, just doing HTTP requests with that was a pain in the ass. I wanted to be intentional with the web app I made because my previous project was just a simple iris detection classifier. It was kind of a boring project, but it was still a project nonetheless. And you know what? It, it, it helped me a lot to get where I am today. And so with being intentional, I wanted to connect the theme of my web app with my internship that I just recently got offered. And because I would be working with NLPs and that kind of stuff, I wanted to theme my web app in an NLP style. I wanted to do something related to NLP. And as a beginner, well, dabbling into this thing is pretty hard and I just wanted to see results fast. That might not, that, that might not be the best thing, but I ended up using a library called TextBlob. And honestly, it was pretty simple. It wasn't that intuitive, but all that matters was I just got results. And I gotta say, when I finished my project, it was a pain to just deploy it, especially using Heroku, because it was just a lot of work. And after I deployed my backend in Heroku, I actually ended up using Versal 
to deploy my front end. And shout out to Nick for this. I gotta say though, Versal is amazing. I highly recommend it for you guys to use it. Just use Versal. Anyways, that's a pretty big introduction. So you know what? Let's just get to the code. So anyways, here's the code. And there's only about three files that I, I'll really need to explain just very briefly. Every, everything else is kind of relevant because app.jss, app.cs, and app.py are the only things you're really gonna need to change after um, starting up a React application in your terminal. So with app.js, we just import our images that I've got. Uh, we have Axios, we have the Axios client, and we have the React stuff that we need to put in. Next, we have our we have our actual app, and you know I am so stupid because I <laughs> I should have put these all into individual components and pages, and then put them into my app.js. And I don't even need this index.js. Honestly, I could have just I could have just put everything. I could have just deleted index.js and just stuck with just app.js. I don't know what I was thinking, um, but at least I've learned what I did wrong. See, with index.js, honestly, there's nothing. I this is just useless. So with app.py, um, this is where our API is, and this is what controls the flow of our data that we put in as an HTTP request to our backend. And what this, what happens here is that the machine learning actually happens here too, and I should have created two Python files, and I realized that later on. But you see, at the root of slash sentiment, that's where we, that's where all this stuff happens, and in our home root. Uh, for lo uh, localhost 5000 if we're running on my local computer uh, I should display this if it was working so yeah and also we, we got that virtual environment for our Python dependencies we also got our we got our node modules and our package.json file so um this app is pretty it's, it's fairly simple I mean like there's nothing in impressive with text blob because there isn't much customizability to it, and you don't really get to do much of the machine learning work because, again, it's pre-trained on an API, and you don't. There's just not much customization. So, other than that, I just wanted to show you uh, the actual demo of the app, and I, I typed something here before. But let's say something like, "Okay, uh, today I was very frustrated." Oh, okay, I, I spelled that incorrectly, uh, but there we go. Today I was very frustrated. It gives it gives you a negative sentiment. So um, here's the back end of my code. My back end of my code is deployed in Heroku. So this is where all this stuff's going on. And I, I did say again, like it was honestly a pain to just deploy this. But with Versal, I, I honestly loved using Versal because it was just so intuitive. And again, yeah, I definitely recommend you guys doing using this. It's just amazing. I also uh, remember one really stupid thing I did was that I always used to use um, Yarn Run or Yarn Start. I forgot. But anyways, I used Yarn to start up my React application. And I don't even know why because I already had NPM. So yeah, just make sure you don't do that mistake, guys. And also when I was deploying my app, I used yarn and it just completely messed up my files. I had to delete a lot of things. So yeah, just stick to one thing. So some takeaways and failures I got from building this project. Oh boy, there were a lot. And wow, let's just summarize this. So some things that I already knew how to use, but I was a little shabby with was just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But some new things that I learned were React, Flask, Text Blob, Virtual Environments, Command Prompt, Heroku, and Versal. So honestly, I gotta say, learning React for the first time was an amazing experience. And again, shout out to Aline for this, because React just made reusing code in HTML just infinitely easier. And I loved the fact that you could just create components and then stuff them into pages and then stuff those pages into one main file. And honestly, it's just, it's just so good. So it's, it's, an it's an amazing way to organize your code. When it came to Flask, oh boy, this was a little bit of a tricky one. Um, I actually ended up learning Flask in two weeks, which is quite a long time. I wouldn't think it'd take you guys that long. If you guys want any suggestions on like videos or whatever, I could, I'll happily send you some. But Flask, yeah, that was a pain in the ass because learning, learning how backend worked and getting my local host 3000 and 5000 to work 
and then just linking the two together with my Flask API, that was, oh my God, big learning curve. Um, I highly recommend going on W3 schools to just check some stuff out uh, with just regular HTML and yeah. And again, like with text blob, text blob wasn't really that intuitive. I mean, I wish it was a little bit more intuitive, but honestly, it just got the job done and you didn't really have to train anything because there was already a pre-trained API and you, all you had to do was just import text blob and do some stuff. When it came to virtual environments, oh boy, this actually solved a lot of the problems I had in the past because I remember every time I would try installing something new, for example, you know, just cloning a GitHub repository and I were to run another machine learning project just to like play around with it. I would install a new version of scikit-learn every time or a new version of whatever library. And like, I just didn't know why I was, I, I kept re-downloading and reinstalling these libraries until I came across virtual environments. And that really helped a lot with version control because now I could just, instead of changing the libraries on my local computer, that, that, that would link to all these other files. It would, I, I could just keep all these different versions in virtual environments. And oh boy, I gotta say, Command Prompt was a game changer. And the reason why was honestly just learning what that desktop app was doing. Like I just see it on my computer and I think, holy crap, you know, what is this thing doing? This looks cool, but actually learning how to use it, like seeding into directories, activating files, going in and out of directories, cd dot dot and starting stuff. Like that, that was crazy, man. And shout out Aline uh, for telling me to figure this stuff out because I kept asking you questions. Honestly, using Heroku was a bitch, just switch to Versal. Just kidding, actually, Heroku was, it was fine. I just don't think I'm experienced enough to use it, but um, it got me a couple hours to figure out how to use it. And honestly, like I was so sleep deprived. It was not good, please. And Versal, man. Versal was amazing. I loved using it. It was just so fast to deploy. Shout out again to Nick for helping me out and just teaching me how to use this. It was an amazing experience because Versal is just super fast in deploying for deploying your machine learning model. And I, I just I just ultimately recommend it to you guys. So yeah. Anyways, my next steps will be going more into computer vision and NLP. But moreover, I'm gonna try learning this uh, new framework for NLP called Raza, Raza NLU. And on top of that, I'm gonna learn Electron.js so I can learn how to make desktop apps alongside with the web apps I'm currently making. And lastly, but not least, I'm gonna try uh, getting a little better at TensorFlow and go for a more optimization approach because I've been just focusing on getting the shit done. But anyways, like, this has been a wild journey. I can't believe I only started learning machine learning three months ago. So if you stay to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. It means so much to me. Don't forget to leave a comment, click that like button, and drop below your thoughts or anything you think I missed or I should have talked about. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later.